What's up everyone, Scott the Trout Hammer here. Got you back in my workshop again for another Tackle Box edition for the Pex and Pisces Fishing Channel. So continuing on the trend of what I described about how this whole fishing thing we do, it's like driving a car with your rod being your chassis, your reel being your engine, and your line being your tires, the wheels on your car. We're gonna continue this and we're gonna start talking about the chassis of your vehicle, the rod. So I'm sure when you go to a sporting goods store and you get to the rod section, you see hundreds of different types of rods and probably don't know what each one does. You're probably just looking for a simple rod to go fishing with, which does work fine. But there are some things that if you want to specialize in certain types of fishing, you do need to understand to pick the best rod for you. What I want you to do is ask yourself this question, what do I want to fish? Not what fish am I trying to catch, what lure do I want to use? Because that determines the rod you need more than anything else. But one of my mentors here in Oregon that helped get me into big bass fishing, Steve, and he'll be featured at some point on the channel. We are going to go fishing sometime together. I love the way he put this the best. So we were talking, him, my wife, and I were at the store. We were talking about the rods that were on the shelf. And I was talking about how I wanted this rod, I wanted this rod, I wanted this rod. And she was, my wife was like, why do you need so many rods? I love the way Steve put it. He asked her, why do you need so many shoes? And in my mind, I'm going, no, it's true. My wife does have a lot of shoes. And my wife says, because these shoes, these shoes go with this dress, these shoes go with this dress, these shoes go with that outfit. And he said, rods are the exact same way. You have a rod reel line set up for one lure and then for another lure and then for another lure because a lot of those lures need that specific rod set up to be able to use properly. Now I'm not going to go into the material used to make the rods. That's a whole different video that take a whole different amount of time to explain. But know that there are different materials that they use to make rods. There's fiberglass, there's graphite, there's carbon fiber, there's composite rods and each one's have their benefits and disadvantages, but I'm just gonna talk about the basic types of rods and what the rods are supposed to do. And there are two basic types of rods. There are casting rods and there are spinning rods. The biggest difference is a casting rod is built more for power fishing. So some you're gonna fish casting rods for fish that have a lot more power, they fight harder, you're able to use bigger lures on a casting rod. Casting rods also have a lot more guides on the rod because of the build of the rod. It'll help keep the line where it needs to be on the rod to properly not overload the rod. And then spinning rods are a little more for finesse fishing. So spinning rods are the most common fishing rod out there. They're the ones that almost everyone starts out fishing on. I know I did. So fishing rods, you use lighter gear. You typically target smaller fish not as powerful fish with spinning gear, but they do make spinning rods that can target the bigger fish like the casting rods can. And spinning rods usually have sm less and smaller eyelets because there's not a whole lot needed to guide the line down the rod for it to have the correct action. That being said, typically when you're shopping for a fishing rod, you want to pick a rod that has really good quality guides and has a good number of guides on the rod. You don't want to go for a cheapo rod that only has like four guides for like a seven foot rod. It's not going to have the kind of action you want. So like I said, you're picking a rod more for what you want to fish with, not what you want to fish for. And there are three key attributes that contribute together to give you casting ability with your lure. They are length, power, and action of the rod. So rods scale in length usually in three inch increments. So there's four foot rods all the way up to 13 foot rods and all of them increase in those three inch increments. So for example, my two ultralights I have here, I have a four foot six ultralight and a five foot ultralight. And they do basically the same thing, but there are a few differences, which is what I'm going to explain. So length of a rod determines your leverage of casting. Think of it mechanically. So you have a shorter rod, you're going to be able to cast a lure only so far. If you have a longer rod, your casting distance is immediately increased based on the leverage, based on the length of force you're putting into the lure when you cast. And something with the length of rod you want to take into account is the surroundings where you're going to be fishing. So for example, this four and a half foot ultralight is great for fishing in tight spaces, like if I'm, if I'm undercover, like if I'm in some bushes or under a low hanging tree, this casts just fine because you know it doesn't have the length to uh, get snagged up. 
But if I'm in open water, it's not that helpful unless I only want to fish a few feet off the bank, whereas a longer rod allows me to get some more distance while casting the lure. The next attribute is the power of the rod. So the power of the rod ranges from ultralight to light to medium to medium heavy to heavy and then extra heavy. Now the power of the rod governs two things about the rod. One, it governs your ability to handle the fish. Also, it determines how strong of a line you can usually put on the rod. So when you buy a fishing rod or when you're shopping for fishing rods, they usually print the statistics of the rod on the line or of, of the rod on the shaft of the rod that tell you its power and tell you what size of line you're supposed to use for it. So like the lighter rods, you want to use those for the smaller fish like the panfish, trout, uh, smaller bass. You want to use the heavier rods for like the bigger bass, the salmon, steelhead, anything that's going to have a lot of power. And they even make rods that specialize for carp and catfish. Two of the strongest fish you can catch, even though they're not game fish, those things have so much strength, they have to specialize rods for them. And here's something to always consider with your fishing rods. Rods are stronger than you think. You can find plenty of channels and plenty of videos on YouTube that demonstrate the power of rods, and you'd be amazed with some of the even like regular, small, uh, inexpensive rods, how much they can lift and how much, how much they can endure. And the last attribute to take into account when picking a rod is the action of the rod. And the action of the rod determines how quickly the rod recovers. That means how quickly the rod can go from a loaded position to a neutral position. That also tells you where the rod tapers, like where the bend is going to begin in the rod. So an extra fast rod will bend really close to the tip, a fast rod between the tip and the middle of the rod. A moderate speed rod will bend somewhere in the middle and a slow rod all the way down here in the back between the first guide and the handle of the rod. And the action of the rod also tells you the backbone of the rod, meaning if you're going to uh, fish a big lure, you want to use a fast rod, something that has a good stiff body that isn't going to bend under stress. If you're going to fish a light lure, something like a moderate or a slow rod will help you get that casting distance because with a small lure, you're only going to usually catch that small fish. You really don't need a rod that has a ton of backbone. You know, for example, an ultralight almost always has a slow taper. It's going to bend all the way back here by the handle. Whereas this spinning rod here, a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, has a fast taper, so the bend starts right between the tip and the middle of the rod. Now I am going to make videos where I break down specific lures and the rods you want to use for those lures, but that will be another video. Yeah, all three of those attributes, length, power, and action, particularly power and action, those things help determine the length of your cast, meaning how far you can cast into the water. You really don't want to make big 100 foot casts every single time. I mean, I remember when I first started fishing, my grandpa had the small pond, and it was every time I went out there, I wanted to see if I could cast the other side. Now, I can cast the other side of some of the big ponds that I fish in. I don't need to because I've learned to fish in levels, fish what's in front of me first, then fish further out, then further out, then further out, unless I'm targeting specific areas. But this is, this is mostly determining, this is mostly to help you determine what you want to use for the lure you're using. So a big difference between spinning rods and casting rods are the guides. So spinning rods, they have a bigger first guide because the spool takes a lot wider of a loop coming through these guides, so it has that bigger first guide. But usually the rest of the guides are pretty close in size, at least especially toward the tip, and the, the last guide at the tip is almost always the same across all rods. And then with a casting rod, I've got my crankbait rod here, the first guide is not very big because the spool doesn't loop when it comes back to the reel. It just goes back and forth across a level wind guide. And casting rods usually have more guides and smaller guides. And again, that's due to specializing with different lures to target specific fish. Now me personally, I think all of your guides are important. You need to take care of your guides. Don't put if you have a hook or a lure, don't put your hook in the guide. You know, they have loops near the handle of the rod. That's where you're supposed to put it. Or like on a casting rod, like I've got my crankbait rod there. You saw I've actually got the, uh, the crankbait stuck right next to, or right into the level wind of the reel. And you see, they actually put that bar there for something like this so I don't snag the lure on everything when I'm going from spot to spot. But you never want to keep your hook or your lure inside the guide. If anything, go for 
that shaft that connects the guide to the axle rod itself. You can put your hook or your lure in there, but you want to protect, most importantly, your first guide and your last guide. Those are the two most important guides, and these are the ones that usually get replaced the most. And as I'm sure you may well have seen, that we have two different types of handles on our rods too. We have foam handles and we have cork handles. And the difference really is personal preference. There are some rods where I prefer the, the uh, foam handle and I prefer the sort of split grip. So uh, it gives me a little more power into the cast. But the cork rods do tend to give you a lot more sensitivity. You can feel the bite through the rod a lot better on a cork rod. And if you're fishing for a long time, if you're making a lot of casts, the cork rod is a lot more friendly of something to handle. It's a lot softer. It doesn't hurt your hand as much as the foam handles do. And yeah, there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys found this video helpful and educational. I'm trying to balance the academic with the practical side of what I'm wanting to do with the channel. So you're going to see me a lot more frequently alternate between a fishing video and sort of a teaching video like this one and the other Tackle Box series videos I'm going to be making. But if you guys found this video helpful, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up down there. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them. Also, don't forget to subscribe. And once again, I'm Scott Trouthammer with Pex Pisces Fishing, telling you, as always, tips up tight lines, and have fun fishing.